I've become fully engrossed in the topics of finance, money, and business, starting with a degree in economics to a Series 7 qualification, and then as a job as a senior financial analyst. And I've learned an enormous amount about not only how others treat their finances, but my own personal consumption habits. And understanding some of the poor habits that I've adopted, and then correcting course to get back on track. So in this video, I'm gonna go over seven widespread money habits that most fall into and how to detach from them to lead a more productive life. All right, habit number one is priorities. And believe it or not, there's actually a clear and distinct difference in how the rich and the poor approach their overall financial budget. The rich do something known as reverse budgeting, where their savings goals are prioritized over mandatory expenses like their rent, mortgage, groceries, and things like that. It's done for a couple of different reasons, but most importantly is empowerment. You are making a declarative statement that you're prioritizing yourself first. And doing this actually ensures compound wealth effects over time. Whether you save the money or you invest it once you've hit your savings goals, you're always progressing your picture. And the way that this contrasts with those with poor financial habits is they pay themselves last and when they can. So once their budget's hit eaten up by bills, their mortgage, maybe dinner and movies, then they pay themselves with whatever's left over and it really holds them back from progressing their financial picture and hitting their goals. All right, habit number two is a buffer. And this actually does tie into the theme of not paying yourself first. So you should have at least three to six months worth of cash saved. It's is also typically known as an emergency fund. Basically, it covers any event that happens unforeseen. You have the ability to pay for it. This could result from a car issue. My dad actually just recently had the alternator in his truck blow out. Could result from medical trips, uh, hospital bills, things like that. It really could come in any event or form. You just want to make sure that you have yourself covered. And the worst thing that you could do in this situation is try to put it on credit or pull from a retirement account to service it that just digs a much deeper hole. There's actually really hard data to, to suggest that those who struggle to recover from a financial shock, it's due to not having any sort of built up savings. So if that's you or you found yourself in that situation, just start to build up that nest now. All right, next is spending. And I think most people can identify some times in their own life where this has happened to them. The more that they make, the more that they spend. It's actually why more than 50% of six-figure earners is still living paycheck to paycheck. In some extreme situations, their pace of spending increases more drastically than their increase in earnings. Keeping up with the Joneses is a psychological phenomenon. It's real societal pressures to try to keep up with appearances, but they're just appearances and not true characterizations of wealth. It's why the don't judge a book by its cover is such a popular idiom. Uh, Jeff Bezos drove a 1996 Honda Accord up into the year 2013, which was many years after the fact he became a billionaire. So the key here is to just stop giving a crap. Stop caring about what other people think because nobody else is going to be making those payments other than you. All right, habit number four is poor finances. And more specifically than that, being comfortable with bad debt. Most have become numb to using their credit card for essentially every single part of their life. There's record high inflation. Most of the population still lives paycheck to paycheck, so they try to bridge the gap by swiping the card. It's become so normalized, and the problem only gets worse when it gets used as a crutch. People with poor finances will rationalize using their credit cards for anything and everything and then it becomes a very slippery slope from there. And that's by design. These credit card companies make a killing charging 21% interest. So a good rule of thumb is, if you can't pay for it outright in cash and twice over, you probably can't afford it. So start using cash, especially for those smaller purchases, just to start setting those good habits. All right, next is savings. And I don't actually mean this in the way that you probably think that I do. Most people think that they can save their way to wealth but that is not how the wealthy got rich. You have to shift your mindset from a savings approach to an attaining approach because there's always gonna be a cap on how much you can save. 
you can project that number out year over year and you know exactly what it will be, but there is an infinite number on how much money you can make. Starting a business, a side hustle, and investing are all ways that you can shift your mindset to an abundance approach, which just means that there's enough wealth, enough success out there for you, you just have to go out there and make it happen. All right, next is paying too much in taxes. And tax time can be a really painful time of year for some people, and it usually is the biggest expense, but it doesn't have to be. Most people think that they have to be in the 1% to benefit from tax laws, but there are tax loopholes out there available for even the average person. Most people have a 401k plan that they contribute to through their employer. So contributing to that 401k plan is a way to directly reduce taxable income. There are some other tax advantage strategic vehicles out there like IRAs, 529 college savings plans, and even a health savings account. So if you want me to go over this topic even further and create a separate video, drop a comment down below. A lot of people put off being committed to investing early and often for a number of different reasons like time, a lack of knowledge, or an aversion to risk which just means you're scared to lose your money, which I've seen is the number one reason for people's hesitancy to invest. If you don't create an intentional habit to investing, you're gonna procrastinate on doing it. You'll put it off for the next week, and then the next week, and then the next week, and the more time that has gone by, you will lose out on the largest benefit of investing, which is compounding growth. Time is ironically our greatest tool for wealth. Look at this chart and there's two examples. One person starts to invest at 25, $100 a month at a 5% compounding rate of return. That same person, if they waited until 35 to invest that same amount of money, you can see by the time that they're 65, there's a significant difference with such a marginal amount of money. So remember the key to wealth is time and commitment. So that's all I've got for you in this video. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.